back, everyone. We are queuing up for our final game of the day, G2 Esports versus Royal Never Give Up. And it's very important to note here that if RNG comes away with a six straight win, not only will they have locked in their bracket stage for this tournament, that means they've locked in a number one seed for their region at Worlds. So a lot on the line. However, they're playing with some cushion given the fact that they've got plenty of games left to play. Yeah, they certainly are. And beyond that, going six and zero after what was a pretty abysmal world performances out of the Chinese region is huge for the LPL right now. So RNG really doing more. They're restoring faith in what was a region on the brink <laughs> of... Uh, the one turner who spawn doesn't believe in them. Don't finish. Don't finish. Do well. Don't finish the sentence. No, I'm not going to uh, finish that one. But uh, I look, I I agree with you. I didn't really believe that RNG would be the best team here. However, I think yeah. that. Luck has been on their side because they were a great team coming into this tournament and all of a sudden G2 and SKT have completely just not shown up. So yeah. this is RNG's tournament to win right now along with maybe the Flash Wolves. Let's talk about some of the components then of what's made them uh, one of the top teams here, particularly looking at Zhao Hu in the mid lane. Yeah, yeah, I really think that in this tournament a lot of people are saying the jungle and the mid are the most important positions and I think that's what like uh, RNG have brought to us. Yeah, I think that they have the best mid laner in this competition right now. Mm -hmm. Xiao, who has just uh, maple, maple. been incredibly <laughs> potent, and they play around him terrifically. Well, there's some statistics that might disagree yeah, with you when it comes to Maple from, uh, on Flash Wolves. RNG does a little bit <laughs> I mean, more, too. There, there's more also for RNG. First of all, we expected the meta not to really fit them that well because we thought it was going to be a lot more you know, macro-focused, but actually what we've seen at MSI, we've talked about it before, you know, a lot more team fight focus, a lot of teams aggressive, and when they do make mistakes, they get punished, and that's where RNG's been able to find team fights left and right. I mean, Flash Wolves kind of decided to drop their split pushing composition, just walks right into a fight, making RNG look very strong. But also, we gotta talk about supports, because Mata and Sword Art have been the two best ones, yeah. and Alistar has been the pick. Again, remove that, it's, it's too good in their hands, but. Mata can make plays on all the, all the picks as well. Yeah, definitely the case. And I, whilst I do agree that, you know, if you play a perfect macro game, you can beat RNG, they are so quick to punish mistakes and they make you teleport early. So you really do have to be disciplined playing against this team. Right, and this is a very tall order for G2 here to take a game yeah. off of RNG, given the way that this tournament has gone so far. But Deficio, in this game, what are you looking for specifically out of the European team to show us? <laughs> I mean, if they're going to win, I'm looking at a lot of things because we need to see every single player step up and we also need to see them actually have better communications, some sort of discipline in the game and not just not play over aggressive. But if we just look at G2 and what we can expect, honestly, I just want to see positive trends mm -hmm. moving forward because we're looking at a top four now where we have Flash Wolves, CLG, SKT and RNG. Yes. Three of those teams have at least four wins. So they're pretty far away from G2 and Supermassive at the moment. It's just SKT. And you're not expecting them to keep losing. So if G2 are ever going to surprise us, they have to pick up a lot of wins in a row. And that starts here, not with, a, not with a win specifically, but with looking good and showing they can actually do more than their very, very crazy single individual player style where there's actually no teamwork at all. all right, well, as you mentioned, it starts now for G2 if they're going to turn it on at any point. The team's already on stage, so let's get to the casters and into the draft. Thank you very much, Dash. We are getting ready to start this game off as G2 Esports looking for their second win in this tournament, which means we have got in the top lane, it is going to be Kikis roaming the jungle. We've got Trick, mid laner Perks, who has been very outspoken all times. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. And then Emperor the AD carry, Hybrid the support, and then their coach, of course, is Young Buck. Yeah, and on the other side, they'll be facing off against the currently undefeated team from the LPL. Royal never give up. Looper in the top lane, Amalek's G in the jungle, Xiaohu in the mid lane, Wush on AD carry, Mata, former world champion, as support with Coach 5. Yeah, this team has looked very, very scary, and all the hope really started during that SKT game that went all the way to an hour. But they have yeah. been incredible. We've talked about this, uh, where there is parts to crack in this team. Talking about, like, The Rock, we decided it was, it was basically Mata, who has just basically throwing Xiaohu at the enemy team, and then they're just picking up kills left and right. And it's crazy. This meta in this tournament has favored them because it's all about these fights. It's great. Yep, you just team fight again and again, and they know all about how to team fight. But really, the games they have won have actually been quite close. Uh, every single one of them. Coming into the day, stack called gold spent percentage difference, which is the percentage difference of your spent gold throughout the game was only 4.8% higher than their opponents. So they've been very close in gold throughout pretty much all their games, despite remaining undefeated. Very good at team fighting, very clutch is what that tells me. But it also means 
they're not unbeatable in any sense of the word. Oh, but the real question is, is G2 the team that may be able to do it? I mean, they've looked so shaky, only picking up their first win earlier against Supermassive, and, you know, maybe this is the start of the turnaround, but it is a hell of a team to try to go up against. It Last really man is. now. It's oh. over to RNG side. Yeah, this this is... I like I do like this adaptation, though, with the Twitch ban starting off, even though there's yeah. a lot available. I mean, RNG know how to play around Twitch, and specifically the Twitch Kindred combo seems the most crazy. Banning both both of them might be a little excessive, but they definitely didn't want to deal with the Twitch. It forces you into so many weird things. And that's the Callista ban. No supports besides the Bard really taken off the board, so that's the first pick Alistar for G2. Yeah, really heavily target banning from RNG's side, although they didn't ban Braum, which is one Curious. of Hybrid's best champions throughout the regular season. Well, he didn't want it anyways. It's all right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this was actually a question I think that we, were, we, we needed to ask even in EU, that Hybrid and Alistar, not necessarily yeah. mixed as much. Not necessarily, and I think a lot of it has to do with having to deny for Mata. They just don't want to give Mata his best support champion, so they're forced into this first pick, which if you're RNG and you can force your opponent into a first pick, that's usually a good thing. It does give away. The Echo Graves picked up, so we may see the Nidalee for Trick. He actually had quite a lot of success on that, but as we've been seeing in this tournament, it can be a bit of a trap. Yeah, definitely can be. Really wondering here how the team comps will come together. RNG already with two strong team fighting components. Mm -hmm. G2. Ooh, guess what? That is a quick Azir lock Some in. team fighting components on this side, too. There we go. G2 definitely taking their time about the other one, but Perks, just no hesitation. Give me that Azir. He wants to go shuffling. No more rise for him. Trying to switch it up a little bit. Didn't work out tremendously for him early on in the event. Mm-hmm. They do lock the Lucian, and this is also a no-brainer for Emperor. He had so many picks on this champion, uh, beyond pretty much everybody else in the European LCS, yeah. but at the same time, it has been, as you said, far and away the most contested AD carry here. Yeah, Lucian just steadily good, picked in every single game, not banned though, so. Go the hover. Xiaohu, I mean, he, he played the LeBlanc against Faker. He... Yep. Beat him. His LeBlanc is just so, so good, it would yeah. make... A lot of sense here, but you would also be picking it a little early, which would give you the potential to have it countered by some other champions in it. Like, for instance, when we saw COG playing Poppy and Janna, there's some things that you can do to disrupt that, so they may still wait until the last pick to pick the Sivir. Yeah. Or, sorry, the, the LeBlanc there. The Sivir, though, they should definitely pick chance. now. I mean, that got left up. Well, they don't have to pick it now, but it got left up, and that was something that we didn't really bring up, that Sivir uh, quite often banned on the last couple days of competitive play here. Gets locked in this time for Wooj, and they take the Braum with it as well. So we're seeing a switch of the supports in terms of signature style. Yeah, and a lot of the regular season, Wooj was actually subbed out for Name, and Name was the Sivir player, but they want to prove that Wooj can play Sivir and was banned against Wooj in the finals against EDG. Again here. Yeah, so the Nidalee does get picked up by Trick, and they take the Poppy for Kickus. Yeah, I think it's mostly necessary for the Poppy, especially if there's going to be a LeBlanc pick for the team fights. Poppy can be quite good in team fights against LeBlanc. Mm -hmm. So Xiao Hu, the only question left in this pick ban is what does he take? He hovered that LeBlanc earlier, and he has been quite possibly the scariest yeah. player here on that champion. Yeah, it's not like Poppy's a counter to it by any means. Xiao Hu playing LeBlanc would be a menace here. And there it is. We, we get, get to, to see, see it, it again. All right. And the crowd is loving this right now. Oh. They should. I mean, he's yeah. had nothing but success on it. Uh, really, they're going to be looking to find fights. They don't have super reliable initiation on the side of RNG, but they do have the ability to press R and just kind of run at them and hope that Braum can get something connected. They look at the side of G2, and they have pretty much the Alistair for their reliable initiation. Yeah. A little bit of disengage, too, between that Alistair, between the Poppy, but... Yeah, it's maybe to be hoped backs. they don't need it. And also, Trick, he's put himself onto this Nidalee that he is comfortable on, but they now as a team need to get it ahead earlier, need to start affecting lanes earlier if they want to have a chance against this ridiculously team-fighting team. Yeah, exactly. RNG, or G2 is actually in more of a siege-type situation with great disengage. That's how they're going to be looking to play. Yeah, we have seen them start to adapt to that macro style. And G2 representing the European LCS. Only one win on the board so far. A big shocker to a lot of fans. We will see if they can triumph in this one. And if you guys think that they can take over the Rift here, tweet at LOL Esports with the hashtag G2Win. Or if you think 
that the hometown heroes will walk away with another victory. Hashtag RNG win. And of course, with that head-to-head, -head, RNG own the rift. Yeah, we're going to see the rematch of these two teams. Remember, for these two teams, they are only halfway through the midseason Invitational. So they will be coming in and starting their second half. And it's definitely not over till it's over. It's actually only half over right now. Yeah, so and we've that seen a lot one and four record versus those five and zero record, both things can change fairly substantially as we see the ownage of the rift there by the LPL. Home base for them, RNG rushing out the gates to start this one off up against Europe's G2. We'll see what they can get done. So far, so standard. We'll have our line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. We got to see COG lane swapping against Supermassive, and that I think should be one of the adjustments by a lot of the teams who have lane swapping as one of their strengths as we move further into MSI here is they should actually be forcing the lane swaps, and G2 have been complimented heavily on their ability to lane swap, but then also play quickly, and RNG have been criticized. But RNG has also been very clever at level one in a lot of games, and this is this is actually the move. They push up their mid laner, have Xiaohu fight, which gives RNG time to try and sneak into the side brush, but I believe they got caught by a ward this time. Yeah, G2, this time a little wise to the tricks. Perks will back away a little bit early on this. And everything else is going to settle into the good old standard play of the game. We will not see those lane swaps happening, at least not yet. Or rather we might, because Kikus is bot side. And there we go. Yeah. So Emperor and Hybrid are taking this path. Exactly. I, I think it's in G2's best interest to lane swap. And it's weird, because they are technically against a Sivir, which is... Okay, Krepper will probably kill me if I say it's in G2's best interest to lane swap, because he loves talking about the 2v2 matchups. And yes, in a straight-up 2v2, the Lucian crushes the Sivir. Yeah. Well, um, none of these games are going to be straight up, though. But then you could also just factor in the fact that if G2 can move around the map more and force that type of game, that would also advantage them. And at the very start here, they're trying to push him off the red. They, they might do it. Okay, that's yes, my... Mike. MLXG is able to secure his own buff, but a little bit of harassment there. They will lose out on some of this farm because Wuj and Mata already down in that bottom side doing exactly what they needed to do. Which is freezing. Yeah. So Wush going to be able to farm up, Emperor as well. And even if Lucian and Sivir meet each other later, if they're not exactly in the landing phase, you can still get the advantage matchup of the Lucian to be able to beat the Sivir in duels. But we do have lane swaps. Yeah. We'll take a look at mid since Perks is stepping forward. MLXG was waiting in the wings and they pull the trigger. Oh, oh so my. quick. A two and a half minute first blood for MLXG. The level two gank. Who does that anymore? Nobody expects it, but Perks is already having a rough time. You know who could expect it? It's Kikis. He used to run stuff like Twisted Fate Jungle and run mid lane to first blood people, but this was just standard Graves LeBlanc. Flash in, get the kill, put Perks all the way on tilt if they want to. And he's up here trying to play aggressive because they had just harassed him on red buff. So they didn't expect MLXG to be coming back here, but a really easy gank right there for him Perks. with Perks' positioning in lane. Both his summoners too. And now with the swap back, RNG and G2 should be pretty even on the towers, but that first blood gold to MLXG on, on a Graves, I mean, that's, that's already yeah. worrying. I do have to say though, like that is, such a weird gank to predict if you're in G2's shoes, because uh, especially in the European and North American LCS, lane swapping just felt so automatic by the end of the regular season, where you would split the map, I would call it strong side, weak side, and that's where, the strong side is where you have more people. You have four people on the side of the map, and you usually just kind of ward it up, and you always cheat to that side of the lane. Well, Perks was cheating to that side of the lane, but didn't have it warded up. So he expected MLXG to be participating in the lane swap, doing the standard lane swap that everyone has done hundreds of times in practice, but they didn't. RNG plays a different game, and it completely throws Perks for a loop and gives RNG first blood. And this is part of why RNG has had such unprecedented success here at the Midseason Invitational. Undefeated team, and that's already a good start for them going forward into this one. Another thing that's really good is, is Wujin has got himself not only a CS lead, but he picks up the call a little bit earlier. Okay, so I guess that's not that big different because they pretty much <laughs> they pretty much even it out. But still, he was able to get a little bit earlier for that farm, and you can already see the difference. Emperor has not really been able to do much there, and, and the laning advantage, of course, is completely gone when you're not taking the two v two. Even with the jungle attention to the mid lane, because it was rewarded with the kill, it doesn't set them behind in tempo in any way. I really, I really just have to commend MLXG for sneaking in there and. 
really defying the standard expectations of a lane swap. Now they have a ward there, but it wasn't where it needed to be early on. Yeah, well, Mod is going to find it, and he will be able to clear that away himself, but G2 definitely not going to fall for the same trick twice. And speaking of trick, where's he been? Yeah, I mean, he's, on the bot side. he's been doing lane swap stuff. He's yep. been hard farming the jungle while the other three people push lanes. God. 1v1s just keep on happening. The chains are on to Perks this time. He's got still no cleanse here. He's going to have to shift Sands all the way back. He lose out on some farm, but he, this time he stays alive. Yeah, has to recall immediately, uh -oh. though. Oh, yeah, trick. Stay insane. All good things. And yeah, swapping back and forth. So that's that part's still standard, but RNG's still holding on to that first blood differential uh, and the out farm, really, that they've been able to accomplish. Yeah. At this point, uh, you can say G2's idea to lane swap has backfired, and they should have just gone for the Lucian versus Sivir matchup. Maybe they were trying to blind swap up top lane to meet the opponent's AD carry, because that happens a lot of times when you're playing Sivir. You're just you're trying to guess and swap away from it, but that was not able to happen, obviously, and RNG keeps even in turrets, and then also gets the Rift Herald. So G2, on top of having the lane swapping, which they were supposed to be advantaged on, is losing this one because they give the Rift Herald without being able to take the Dragon. Yeah, no trades available as RNG walk away with the prize. Still holding all the lanes that they really need here. And Xiaohu is still just a constant threat. When, when you have a 1v1 threat like this against anybody, let alone someone as, as talented as Perks, it is just so rough to get ahead here as Kikas also finds Wuj here and he can't really do much to counteract him in that one. Spear goes flying, but Xiaohu easily stepping away from it and the ward is still safe. Yeah, and in this jungle matchup in particular, the Nidalee needs to be able to outpressure the Graves early because Graves' team fighting is much better later in the game. Uh, Trick has a farm advantage over MLXG, but because of the first blood, is actually down 100 gold. But really, Trick needs to continue farming and continue applying pressure to hopefully get his lanes ahead because that's that's what G2 needs to do here. Yeah. Well, without standard landing being a thing, he's going to have to find his way into uncharted territory a little bit here with a lot of wards up. RNG can see him coming very easily here. Uh, Xiaohu jumping in, gets a combo, does not connect the chains, however, but he just keeps on trying, and even though he takes a little bit more than he gives all said and done with the health bars, it doesn't really matter too much, and now pressuring up topside, though, is G2. Yeah, they're going for the dive right here. There's a top laner all by his lonesome, yeah, and a converges. full man gang. Oh, Looper, he does hop over, flashes, exhaust was burdened. MLXG is here, they can't get the kill on him. They may get the tower. Yeah, and the question will be how much can Woosh get on the bottom side versus how many minions do they have left and can they even take this turret? Collateral damages. It helps clear the minions a little bit faster. They can't get the turret off of it. G2 get nothing. Oh, man. And they have to worry about the other lanes. Yep, Xiaohu going in again and Perks was burning down, but not enough damage dealt. He cannot stay in this lane. And Mata and Xiaohu have a massive wave to push. G2 are back up top, though, to try and answer. Yeah, they are able to keep three people up in the top lane so they can get that top lane turret, but Woosh will be able to get a whole bunch of damage on the bottom lane turret and most likely take it since Kikis burned his teleport to get up there in the first place. Oh, man. Not quite two for one in turrets since the mid was saved. Mm -hmm. uh, Perks didn't actually back on that. Yeah, he actually took a bunch of heals from Trick so he could get the blue buff before recalling. Maybe worried about... I don't know what he'd be worried about. They, very low chance of a steal there, but yeah. Well, Shadow the ex extra little bit of gold needs it to pick up a uh, stinger. Actually, hits a breakpoint. He's coming back to lane with only 25 gold. So, so G2 definitely really put to the test here. And RNG, in G2's credit, have not extended the gold lead past much what it was before. It's 500, 600 now. I keep mm -hmm. saying it, then it keeps changing slightly. And RNG. Despite their efforts, they still just got the one kill up. But it's very early. It's not even 10 minutes into this game, too. So they're still on the right track here. And G2 are going to have to find answers, especially when they need to stop this late game from happening. Yeah, and right now they're going to try and punish Xiaohu for getting so aggressive because he's trying to style on perks, but G2's here. Oh, and they turn, even covering all the angles, knocking him up and about, and Trick will get his first kill of the game. To answer back, Emperor finding MLXG in this bottom side. Culling is on, heal is on. MLXG's taking it all. He just doesn't care. Oh. The shotgun is mightier than the pistols. Warrior completed, point blank graves. He just blows Emperor away. But Xiaohu had gone way over aggressive in the mid lane, and that's going to be a bigger win for G2 on the mid side of the map. Yeah, they do grab themselves that outer turret. So as we get closer to this 10 minute mark, start to test and feel the waters about. G2 get four turrets, RNG have three. 
And it's one kill, one kill to two. RNG are not immune yeah. to overstepping their bounds. Absolutely, and we know G2 can play fast. Spawn like to call them a Chinese team of Europe a lot of the time. But he's not he's not wrong, that's for sure. Yeah, they were they're by far the most aggressive team in Europe as far as combined kills per minute. And now Looper also seems like he's not there. G2 capitalizing on a lot of stuff. Yeah, they jump right for him and hybrid gets a combo, but there's not enough damage to finish him off. And with Xiaohu and Mata on their way, they think it best to back away from this one. This is also the adaptation that we have seen though. G2 not blindly over aggressing. And right. that has started to get them back into games that could be otherwise more easily lost. So Obviously, it's still fairly even. In fact, G2 do have that gold lead. And they have the fan vote as well, of course, winning the hearts and minds. But Perks has to be just so damn careful. Yeah, this is the Twitter fan vote. Just for the uh, record. The Weibo fan vote showed a little bit earlier on the other screen. That's, that's I imagine a different it was number. about a 90 10 right there. I guarantee it's a different number, but. Uh, Basically, Chinese Twitter I right there. I don't, I don't do math. But G2, on 61, they're doing it. They're, they're winning. And we do also have to point out that they did also pick up their very first win today, which is good. Being able to actually win a game can play well on your mentality, and it was against Turkey's Supermassive, but that was a team who had already picked up a win, so there was legitimate threat and fear from a lot of the European region that Turkey would win that game. Yeah. That was quite a close game, actually, all said and done, too. But G2, they are making this a very close affair also. Yeah. They've not fallen far behind early. They've adapted to some of those earlier mistakes. They're going to lose out on another Dragon here, unfortunately, but they haven't given up too much in terms of kills or even towers, they've taken more towers than they've given. Yep, great thing about MSI, we got a lot of close games, everything yeah. is possible. And it's very possible that G2 can win this game. Uh, one thing that we have to point out though, is Wush is very far ahead of Emperor. Emperor, even though they had that close game against Supermassive, had a very poor game that time as well, died a lot of times out of position. And here he got blown away by MLXG's Graves and is already behind on Lucian, so he doesn't look like he will be able to punish that Lucian versus Sivir matchup as of yet. Yeah, Emperor's definitely had a rough time of it here, but at least he's on a very comfortable pickup. The Alistar for Hybrid, less comfortable, but he has executed some fantastic combos on it too. And that's what's so nice to see is, is the changes, the adaptations out of a team, even a team that has been as downtrodden as G2 over the past couple days, starting to come back into this one. 500 gold to lead at 12 minutes. It still hasn't shifted much, just sliding half that thousand one way or the other. And a lot of ward coverage, a lot of respect from G2. They know that if RNG get an opening, a blind opening, the collapse could be catastrophic. Definitely. Well, Kick is going to town there. Now, Woosh and Mata, they get the ult off to try and chase down Emperor, but he's Ooh. out of there. Yeah, not a very good ultimate right there, but we're not quite in the team fight phase, so maybe RNG won't have that hurt too much. They're also able to get the second Rift Herald, which is impressive since they also have control of the bottom side of the map, so maybe they can... Uh, transition some of this pressure into getting their gold lead back. It's gonna go over to MLXG. Kick is still in the top lane, just shoving wave back and forth. And yeah, we do check in on really how much map control they've been able to establish on the side of RNG. It's been pretty phenomenal. Already extending into that bottom side jungle, still some in the river, and they kind of took that. They kind of took that rift tail right from under G2's nose. Yeah, they really did. G2 wasn't in the right territory to stop that. RNG was able to pick up their second Rift Herald of the day, and it's going to make MLXG a uh, real force to be reckoned with. You know, Swiftness Boots plus Rift Herald make you so fast. He's running out of base with 435 movement speed right now, which mm -hmm. is by far the fastest on the map. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going to get you places pretty quickly. But for G2, I mean, it is worth noting just how much they actually have been able to grow despite the results that you already see in their scoreboard. I mean, the last time these two met, of course, on, on day two, yesterday, in fact, yep. it was a much more one-sided affair. The game only went to about 34 minutes, and basically they just made a ton of bad decisions and then just lost off crazy fights, which was RNG's game. But now we're seeing them go toe-to-toe -to -toe a little bit more. It's still pretty early in the game. Yeah. But, I mean, this is this is nice change from them. Exactly. We were joking in the caster lounge about tilt, and if G2 tilts enough, they can come back to normal. Yeah, 360. Uh, but actually, it does look like they've made a bit of a course correction with their win over Supermassive, and the way they've been able to slow this game down a little bit, initiating the lane swap, and then recovering from the incredibly surprising first blood onto perks because of the way MLXG passed. But yeah. since that moment, uh, G2 have played a pretty damn clean game.
And that's what's so impressive to see, that, that that communication starting to look a lot crisper. Them executing the combos, collapsing on people, and not giving up too much in resolve for it, as Xiaohu goes in, can't execute perks, but he does get half his health in the blink of an eye. Still has to be very careful, and, and Perks has played a lot better, even individually now, that we're seeing, despite that first blood effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's holding strong in the mid lane, just really trying to get to Nasher's Tooth, plus Abyssal Scepter, plus Rylize. That's when Yazir will really start getting strong. Why do you want to take this turret, though? Hybrid Ooh. goes in, but an instantaneous on the hunt from Wooj to run to safety. Didn't have Spell Shield up either. He'd use it to tank the spear. Yeah, so that was the opportunity that Hybrid was trying to capitalize on, but he just can't quite get the right one off. These two just keep going at each other here. There's a big <laughs> mini wave for Looper, but Kickus just doesn't care. It's a huge yeah. tanky poppy. Kickus has the item advantage. His Sunfire Cape being completed is actually huge when compared to a Bombing Cinder, so he's going to be winning those duels until Looper uh, manages to go back and complete the Sunfire. Yeah. Taking a look, of course, between the two of them. I mean, that's not a huge gold differential. Mm -hmm. But it, it has resulted in that item. It's the back timings and everything that G2 just did a little bit better there to hold on in the solo lanes. But now Xiaohu has moved himself to the other solo lane, but we'll talk about that in a minute because Perks does not get the Emperor's Divide he was looking for. Mata is not able to connect enough on his ultimate, and he gets knocked right back into Perks, who takes himself his first kill of the game. Teleports flying left and right. Looper trying to assassinate, but he chrono breaks back, and Perks will live. G2 oh, get a one man. for nine. GG used a lot of summoner spells in that one, but currently he's one for a shout. Who can get him? Perks oh! the screen! Oh, he was cut shopping! They do answer onto Wooj, though, but Perks gets taken out by Xiaohu. Yeah, so I think a lot of people caught shopping right there. Woosh in the jungle as well as Perks in the mid lane. But we got ourselves a game, that's for sure. Yeah, we do. Three to three. Well, what could you expect from a Chinese team and Europe's Chinese team? 16 and a half minutes. Let's take a look at that one because that was all back and forth. Yeah, so it all starts because Perks is going for a play onto Woosh, but Spell Shield is on and he misses the ultimate as well because Woosh can sidestep. But then Mata ults and Perks is able to flash a safety, which resets the fight a little bit. And they're able to focus Mata, which is pretty critical here. But then the teleports all come in. Remember, Looper still hasn't finished his Sunfire Cape, not as strong as he'd want to be, can't burst him down. And that generally resets the fight, and it wasn't Woosh that was actually caught shopping, that was my mistake. Kikis is able to make the chase down, they are able to crush him, and it was only Perks to blame for staying in the shop window. Yep. Excuse Woosh, he just got chased down. Well, he is excused. Uh, Perks, despite that death, he does have a little more gold in his pocket, thanks to the kill. So does Xiaohu though, so everything is pretty much all said and done equal. G2, though, still with the gold lead. And it's actually grown a bit here, which is also important. It's a little over a thousand now. Not hugely significant, but the trend is going their way. Dragon has just spawned, however, and RNG, although they, they took the first one, they've been controlling the Rift Herald's neutral objectives have been all for them right now. Yeah. And RNG are just waiting for a reason, or at least a moment, to go in and just assassinate someone to get that one for free. Yeah, neither top laner have teleport right now. Xiaohu seems to be struggling a little bit more on the Blanc than he was against SKT. Uh, G2 is looking very hard to punish him when he goes in for fights. And they're keeping Perks generally safe. Dragon started. Yeah, and it's actually Looper who is here, but Kikis who is not. Xiaohu's around the back to try and flank. That's the LeBlanc pressure. is kind of zoning G2 out. Oh, and does not get the steal off, and Xiaohu even holds for a moment. Now he turns his attention to Perks, and that health bar is almost zero! Whoa! G2 have to get out fast! Mata completely whiffed his ultimate there, but RNG's gonna continue to press on a little bit. Still very scary is Xiaohu, but RNG do not execute the fight as well as they'd like. They do secure the dragon, however, despite a valiant effort by Trick, who then oh. looks to chase down MLXG. <laughs> and his spear actually hit MLXG because he smite, smote the big raptor. Not necessarily related to that last fight, but Trick has had a Dark Seal for about the last five minutes. Uh, it's probably the first time I've seen in Italy build the Dark Seal. It's not synergizing much. It's helping his refillable potion a little bit. And maybe at some point he's hoping to snowball this game with the Soul Stealer, but I really don't like that buy. Uh, it's just kind of wasted gold in his inventory at the moment. Yeah. Well, at the very least, he does manage to get his Rod of Ages too. So he starts stacking yeah. that up. Maybe a bit later than he would have liked because of it, but... Just stack as many things yeah. he should buy. Here yes. next. Um, get all that deferred power into his build. No, Nidalee needs to take over the game early. Yeah. And you don't need a Dark Seal to do it. He's working on his Rylize, which I think is the proper build after the Dark Seal. 
which shouldn't be there. Yeah. Uh, G2 still, despite the setbacks, have managed to hang out in the front with the gold, but things start changing when neutral decks start meaning a lot more. Two dragons to RNG, mm -hmm. they've gotten all the Rift Heralds. Baron is about to spawn. And yep. RNG maybe don't want to take that that quick, but with all the map control they've exerted, it's going to be hard for G2 to contest. Yeah, RNG don't actually have the best Baron team as far as how quickly they can do it, which I think will give G2 a little bit of breathing room. Also, G2's been able to get all these wards up around the Baron pit. If you're thinking about who's actually got a better Baron team, it's G2. Uh, Nidalee can speed up the attack speed of either Lucian or Azir, and Azir is one of the best Baron killing champions in the game. Plus, so. they've got Kickers to be able to knock out anyone who attempts to smite steal. It's still exactly. very risky, though. And, you know, G2, they've been burned by so many of these games so far that have been risky plays. Not just risky plays, but a lot of that just sunk them. And I think they might think twice about this one. It shouldn't be an early Baron game, that's for sure. But Xiao Hu, he's still looking for picks. Mm -hmm. Oh, good ward down by Hybrid. It's going to get cleared, but... I mean, he needs to keep looking for picks, but G2 is also very cognizant of goes. that fact. Uh, he didn't get a one-shot. Trick is Nidalee. He can heal back up. Uh, it's Siege is on, looking though. pretty strong for G2. They're setting up Siege. This is what their team comp wants to do. Yeah, it's what we talked about to pick some bans right now. and Just keep denying the insta-kills here. Hybrid does have the chains on him, but RNG seemed a bit hesitant to go all in on this one, especially with the Azir turret. Now Kickus around the backside just walked it, and he forces Xiao Hu away. Parallel Convergence is on. Shiver Hybrid and Trick there a little bit. Caught for a moment. Perk's going a little low in this one. He flashes, and they get a heal on him, but they turn for Xiao Hu! He's not gonna be down just yet! Emperor's divided to push him back. Poppy looking for the chase down, and this fight is incredibly messy, but nobody dies! How does that happen? And everyone's alive. Xiao Hu gets out with a sliver because he can elude Kikas who flashed over the wall to stop him. And that kind of goes to show a lot of what we're going to be seeing in this game. G2 trying to set up a siege. RNG pressing the go button and Sivir's ultimate. And Mata burned his flash on top of it to try and get the ultimate down to stop them. But they still couldn't get the kills. Yeah, it all started with this bit of a pincer that G2 found themselves yeah. in. Exactly. So the block is down on the bottom side and Xiao Hu and Hyper gets chunked out. But he pops his ultimate off. The Poppy Ultimate doesn't actually stop them from coming in, and the Braum Ultimate kind of bisects the fight. Uh, miraculous that Xiao Hu can get out of this one. It looks like Kikis. Oh. Uh, that's the block for you. Yeah. Not as miraculous as I thought. He just pressed his buttons right. <laughs> uh, so Xiao Hu eludes death yet again, but G2 and RNG both very trigger happy with these summoner spells, mm -hmm. uh, and really, really close fights all around for both teams, but credit to them for not losing a man, either side. And that is a decent bit of damage for MLXG. Yeah, and you look at how much damage RNG did in that fight. It's tragic for them that they didn't actually pick up a kill with all of that, mm -hmm. right? That's at least 5,000 damage for all of those guys combined. And it wasn't enough to take down a health bar. Their focus, were, they weren't able to lock down someone. And that's one of the, the flaws in their team composition. I think it's why they tried to pick a Sivir because they were seeing G2 had very good siege potential. They think, crap, we need engage. Uh, so they picked the Sivir, but it actually wasn't enough in that last fight. Yeah, now this tower with uh, MLXG having to back in the top side goes down, really without a whole lot of hassle. Looper looking to try and flank around the side, but nobody's really in position to do this. So G2 get a free objective. Yep. And we say free, but they work for that. Like, that was the second or third time true. They, they tried they, to see. They paid a couple end. installments earlier, but then they got to collect on it. But Perks now, look at how low he's going in this. He sends the Emperor's Divide, but Wu sends him all the way back to base the long way. Now Emperor trying to hold on, but Mata with the Unbreakable will mean that this turret does not last very long there. And 300 is now the goal lead for G2, not much. Yeah, and that's the cost they paid for that mid lane turret. It was free at the time of purchase, but there was a payment due in the next week, and they had to pay with their own turret. They'd used the Flash previously on their other siege attempts, and then when the Sivaralt is popped for the next time, they don't have the Flash to escape, and Perks was also a little bit too far up. Never buying anything on credit again. It's really just, <laughs> it's its not the logical thing to do. No. So Perks goes down in that fight. He's 1-3-1. One, one. Still definitely not his worst performance. And they are really gunning for him here. Let's see how this happens. Xiao who goes in, half his yeah. health's gone. And then the rest of the team arrives. I mean, really how it happened is the Perks was just where he shouldn't have been. The rest of Chichu's team was spread out around the map. Poppy top lane, Alistair in the river. And Perks was up there with no flash. He should not have been there, and that's not a play Perks would make, had made m much in the regular season, but it's becoming all too common in MSI. This is true. So still a lot of 
errors, a lot of mistakes positionally and otherwise, but we'll see if they can maybe capitalize on Xiaohu's mistake. Oh. And they pin him into the wall, not escaping this time. Trick with the auto attack will finish the job. And now the Dragon started for G2. This will be their first. This will definitely give them some fighting boost. And that's an example of why Poppy can be very good into the block. Uh, good choice there for Kickers to have it. Up gets onto the block, which is a fault to Xiao, who couldn't escape quickly enough and also didn't have the team to back him up. But it's a constant battle of Xiao, who trying to get in flank position for these fights against G2, as G2 is very good at knocking people away from fights and they even it up once again. Yeah, not much RNG can get out of this. They try to do a bit of counter jungling, but not able to push on towers. You can still see Emperor and Hybrid pushing on that bottom side. It's going to be a couple of tower trades. Yeah, Xiao Hu's still dead. Wu's trying to push up the mid lane. Maybe they can trade it, but they're so far behind in the tempo of this play. It would continue if they go for this. Wu's just trying for it, but it's going to be really hard for RNG to defend their inhibitor turret, most likely losing it because they didn't all recall once. Cold feet for RNG, but they hesitate too long. This is going to be an inhibitor turret. Xiao Hu looking for a hunt on this one, but that's down. 25 minutes in, and G2 are looking for the first inhibitor of the game. This is just like MSI right here. G2, though, overstays a little bit, and they're trying for a fight. Yeah, but... You can see G2 collapsing all together, a teleport in for Kickus. Now they will finish this one off, but will they pay for it dearly? Inhibitor is taken, Xiaohu around the side, still looking for this pick. MLXG just finished his back. Yeah. G2 th just got away with burglary. They're all fake initiations, so G2 knew that MLXG wasn't there because when Kickus teleported, MLXG was actually right beside him. So when they popped the Sivir ultimate, G2 knew they weren't going to fight. They could finish the inhibitor, it was all a bluff, but... G2 already knew their hand. You can't bluff if they know your hand. Yeah. RNG loses their inhibitor because of some bad strategic calls, late recalls, and now they're going to try and make up for it with the Baron. But remember, they don't kill it very quickly. No. This is on G2 to recognize the space on the map they have just left, and they have to get there. Trick is racing for it, but Xiaohu's around the other side. Baron's already down to 3,000 health here. No one's coming in in time just yet. Trick has arrived, but they are collapsing around him. This time he flashes away. Baron is secured here by MLXG, but the fight is not over yet. Most of RNG escaping. Xiaohu is on the wrong side of the map, however. Let's see if they can at least get the consolation prize. That is how you do it right there, and maybe Xiaohu oh! can be LeBlanc. I don't think so this time. Ah. He nearly takes Trick with him, though. So Baron power play to RNG, but they lose one man for it, all said and done, and the inhibitor's already down. This game just keeps getting more and more interesting, Jet. Oh, absolutely, especially when you think about what it was like coming in. RNG undefeated, 5-0, G2, looking like they were just completely tilted coming in, 1-4, and four. but they are playing themselves into this tournament, and they are dead even in gold, facing now a Baron buff, and that sneak from RNG, despite them making a very poor call to defend their inhibitor beforehand, was a very smart call to go for it, especially in the way that Xiaohu and Mata attacked Trick the instant he went close to Baron. We've seen way too many Baron steals at MSI here because teams are not paying time to the enemy jungler, but they did it this time. Trick had to flash away, which let them secure the Baron. And as it stands, G2, despite facing down that Baron buff, are able to start pushing lanes out. Xiaohu's had to go top to answer back here. Wuji in the mid lane. There just aren't a whole lot of minions to really work with. And with supers in the bottom side still for G2, it's going to make RNG's life hard trying to push out, trying to even split across the map. Of course, not looking too partial to the 1-3-1 one, one when you're all moving yourself towards the mid and the top. Yeah, definitely not. 28 right minutes here. And this gold, it oscillates, but it is never far away from either side. And just given results, this is definitely impressive showing from G2 Esports. Yeah, I mean, we talked a lot during the regular season about G2 and how they were able to kind of bounce back within a game. They'd make a mistake, but they'd keep the pedal to the metal, they'd keep going. Well, how about bouncing back within a tournament? Can they do that too? Because they had such a bad opening to this, but now they're up against the current number one in the tournament after getting first blooded and they have recovered. They're trying their best to play to their compositions. Win condition, it's been a back and forth game, but they're looking to push it home. Let's see if they can break another part of the base, but Looper and Xiaohu might have something to say about that. The flanks, though, are gonna be spotted. Thanks to Courteous Ward from G2. Gold dead even on the board. Baron Empowerment versus the G2 push. Will it be enough? Not yet. They have to back away with the calling. Yeah, Looper is actually behind G2 right now, and Xiaohu is off to the side, but RNG is far too spread out to really do anything with it. That's yeah. the only way RNG can stop these sieges, though. They can't just get poked out by these here. They have to threaten the flank, and G2 had respected to back away. Yeah, still super minions on this bottom side, and Xiaohu's had to go on cleanup duty here. Both mid laners, actually. Really similar scores. 
This is not something we expected to see from from the ace on RNG. Yeah. Especially not on the signature LeBlanc. And G2, you know, it seemed maybe very scary that it was left open to him. But it hasn't really been as much of a problem. Yeah, I think earlier on in the game, after he'd gotten the first blood, the play where Xiaohu came back to lane and then used his distortion, his mimics distortion onto perks, uh, was actually very similar to a play he did to Faker earlier on in the tournament where he killed him and extended his lead. So I think Xiaohu was like really in his element when he made that play, and G2 was completely ready for it and shut him down. And ever since that point in the game, Xiaohu just hasn't been the same LeBlanc player. He's had a little bit of hesitation in his moves. Yeah, and that is also worrying for what has otherwise been an incredible, incredible performance out of that mid lane. Uh, Mata has also had a couple of mistakes of his own. So we see a few cracks in the armor of the Chinese side, but is it going to be enough for G2 to break through? They've got one part of the base, and they're still holding firm across the rest of the map. As long as they stick together, it seems like it's working out for them. Dragon's going to be up in 15 seconds. G2 are definitely yeah. going to want that. Yeah, so there's a few things we'll have to pay attention to in the next team fights. It'll be the quality of the initiation, uh, the setup, and then also the difference in the itemization for the AD carries. Uh, Emperor had gone for an early maul of Malmordius. It's defensive, it's to stop the assassination from Xiaohu. But Wush has gone for an early Infinity Edge. And when Sivir can crit, 70% crit in these fights and gets a few hits off, it will be huge. But this dragon is so early and they're about to fight. Press the go button, it's going to be Trick that secures it, but Emperor is going to pay the price for that. Mata with the kill. It's a one for Drake, but Hybrid is left for dead. And Wush slays him. Two now down. G2, they've got to run for their lives. Yeah, they just overcommit a little bit for that dragon and get collapsed upon. All of the setup that they had for the previous fights just wasn't there on that one, and Woosh can just press the go button. No one is there to actually return damage on his Infinity Edge low defensive Sivir build, and they're going to take even more off that fight. Yep, four members here from RNG as they sent Looper back to deal with the encroaching mini wave. See if they can crack anything out of this one. 20 seconds still remain before Emperor's going to be up. 12 on hybrid. Perk's a little low for this, but RNG, they're not keen on diving in, and this might be the defense. Yeah, this is actually one of the newest looks from RNG as we move towards MSI, is they're not going too far on the play. The old, they're like, oh, we got two people dead. Maybe they would have just taken Looper and tried to dive an inhibitor while leaving their minions open. Oh, but Mata, Mata though, is out of position. That's a Rylai spear. It's going to slow him. Does get stand behind me, and now Wooj pops on the hunt. Spell shields up the spear. He stays alive on that one, but G2, they can they prove they still got teeth to bite back as soon as they can. RNG still not overstaying. They will make it out there. And there is a sneaky little pink board on yeah. that side of the map. Sneaky, I don't know what the purpose of it will be. I mean, eventually Looper would be able to teleport back in, but not at the moment. I had this explained to me, though. There's a chance RNG. sometimes when you walk through here. Uh, you'll see a team rotating around and you could sneak a Baron. Mm -hmm. So if they don't clear that ward and they're still messing around around red buff, RNG could potentially sneak another Baron. That would be the highest use for that ward. Yeah. It's very possible. Looper's going to get his back on as uh, Kickus is clearing out mini waves. Still a naked inhibitor in that bottom side and no such thing in G2 space. They've still even got an outer there, or an inner rather. Uh, maybe not for long as Shahu crashes a big mini wave into it, but G2, they're already back to siege mode. Right, and here we go. One of the reasons this game is so low on kills is because G2 has so much disengage, but you have to imagine eventually this game is going to crack itself wide open and they're going for it again. RNG have some pretty powerful items right here if they're able to force a fight. And Kikis is also not here, so his arrival to the fight would be delayed and it will be harder for him to disengage with Poppy all. As a whole load of wards though that he does have to be able to get into this one. Azir turret self-destructs or gets taken out rather. Still the siege commences, continues. RNG just look for an angle back into this one. Looper having to dodge and dive away from Emperor. Baron's gonna be another factor again in a minute though and G2 as you mentioned yeah. have a very good Baron team to try yeah. and force RNG out of their turtling. The amount of knockbacks G2 have is very high and they also have good execute damage from the Nidalee and they also have really fast Baron taking with the Azir. So that's why RNG has to move up to check this. But RNG kind of just want G2 to be posturing, honestly, so they can get a fight around the backside. Yeah. G2 started to force them their way into that jungle. Pulverizes down. Nobody wants to check too far forward. Mata does take a little bit of poke and harass. Kickus might be wandering into the trap here. He sees MLXG and Wooj. Presence is down. Xiaohu might want to get poke in. There are Azir soldiers. Mata goes in. Mata gets the Fissure. Emperor's defied, but look at Perks' health bar. He has to get out of there. And Hybrid flashing away. Abort mission! Kickus with the windup on the poppy copter, but nothing's going to come of it. Looper's still looking for more. Steadfast presence. Kickus able to push them back. 
This fight is so scattered right now. Hybrid is way away from home and Wush is trying to chase him down. But that was just a disengaged fight after they couldn't get it. He's trying to execute. He might be able to. Nope. Um, Wuj takes him at the end of the day. So only casualty of that very long extended fight. RNG just keep trying to find the ends and G2 keep denying most of it at least. Yeah, so close with Xiaohu to be able to kill Perks right there. And he's working towards his death cap. When he gets that, that will be a dead Perks if it happens again. Uh, but Perks is able to cleanse off. I thought he was ignited. He actually was not even ignited there. Cleansed because he thought he would be ignited. If you're perks at this point, though, knowing that that damage threat is just so ridiculous, what do you do? What can you build? Zonia's. There you go. Yeah, he's on his way. So it's a race between Zonia's Hourglass from perks and Death Cap from Shao Hu. Yeah. Speaking of item builds, too, we, we, we got to take a little bit just to go into MLXG because I know this is uh, always a fun one with the Death Dance. Mm -hmm. um, and he's been fairly scary this game as well. Yeah, he's gone extremely aggressive with his Graves build this tournament. The Graves build that most people were familiar with when he rose to popularity was early Maul of Malmordius and then also with Sterix Gage. But MLXG has gone Phantom Dance or Death Dance like every time. And now he just has the Maw thrown in there as well. He might even finish it with a Bloodthirster or an, and an Infinity Edge, which is actually what he did in the 50 minute game against SKT, mm -hmm. which is massive in team fights. Like that Graves is actually equivalent to like a full item 80 carry, not a speaking of not what you consider as a jungler and it's just yeah. pops up way more damage than Nidalee would. Well and he was soloing out Emperor as we saw earlier too, so RNG definitely still a lot of power in their corner. A lot of vision, however, for RNG now that they've managed to establish some more spots that they can really get involved in over by this Baron pit. Uh clears going on though as hybrid Steps into the pit to do it, but Mata and Wuj are here. They're going to actually proc the Baron for just a second. And it's going to be quite the dance, but for the moment, RNG might be trying to knock down the front door. Yeah, it's really just a cat and mouse game here, trying to sneak through wards and get a little bit of an advantage. Uh, still going to be the same game, though. RNG will look to get a flank and maybe kill Perks at the start of the fight. Oh, but G2 pull. would want a little bit more setup before theirs. Obviously, any poke damage you can land is... Huge at Very this point. Huge. Mata's got to get out of there. He uses the Unbreakable. Are they going to start turning for this Baron bait? There is actually a ward here. Teleport is in. They see this coming, but Kickus is caught. He's got the wind up. He knocks away the Sivir, and they turn the fight onto MLXG in the back. and the Looper. Xiaohu is looking for the execution, but Perks knocks him, or rather, he gets dodged out. Can't quite get the execute on that one, and Emperor has gone down as Mata gets the kill credit with the Ignite on that. MLXG oh, that running wild. It. This just might be the game. G2 were looking so good, but one fight could end it all, and Trick is the last man standing here trying to leap away play catch the Italy to Looper but the rest of the team is not falling for that yeah he's running the way but Looper is on him and that's everyone else on G2 is staring at a gray screen this is RNG pushing down the mid lane and looking to start 6-0 at MSI undefeated team so far and we can certainly see why the game is just so damn even all the time but in the end it's gonna be finally the ace Wooj getting that inhibitor after it's all said and done and there is no one left to stop this team RNG Royal never give up take the Nexus turrets take the game and look so damn strong here in MSI Shanghai and they have yet another win where the game is actually pretty close the whole time. But they are just better than the competition at finding the right fights down the stretch. People criticize them for their macro movements. They say they can't lane swap. This game was a lane swap. This game was close. And this game was another RNG victory. And it came all the way down to that final fight in the end. Not perfect, not always clean. But when you come to China... Apparently you play Chinese League of Legends. <laughs> and they played the best! And RNG, guess what? They're the best team in China. And they still are. Everyone included in this tournament so far with the 6-0 start. Magnificent performance. And for G2, it's a heartbreaking loss. But despite it, we are seeing the improvement. It's true. We're seeing the improvement on the Rift but it doesn't show when their Nexus still falls, which has got to be crushing for these guys because this was a chance for G2 to get back in it. Really, the disaster scenario for them is they finish fifth or sixth. And with CLG sitting at four wins, Flashwolf sitting at four wins, SKT sitting at two, but is still SKT and expected to improve, 
it's getting really difficult for G2 in their last four games to make it into the bracket stage. Yeah. One saving grace, they did manage to pick up the win over Supermassive, so we'll have to see. And they still got one more left in their pocket. But you really can't call anything. It's ridiculous how these games have gone. Yeah, even this game could have gone either way. RNG played a lot better down the stretch. G2 was never able to set up the right siege because the Sivir pressure along with the Echo and the LeBlanc flanks was just too much for them to keep track of. And then right at the very end, LeBlanc was a menace in that last fight. Xiaohu, like, you didn't, we didn't really get to see it off the screen, but... I mean, Kikis went to try to zone him out. It basically took the Azir out of the fight. And then yep. that just allowed Wush and his Infinity Edge Sivir free time because both the soul laners were essentially occupied. And it yeah. was a very strong fight for RNG. Well, what's so nuts about the final fight is the fact that we get Wush completely out of that fight because he gets knocked away by the Keeper's Verdict. And then it's a 5v4 and Jiahu's not even really in it. So it's like a 3v5. And then he comes in around the side and then you've got all the trickery back. And RNG yeah. still win it. And these guys are just so damn yeah. good at fighting. I mean, they thrive in those messy fights. They thrive in the fights where everyone's just trying to join it. And Spawn talks about it on the desk all the time. Like, they force you into these fights because they're willing to go for them. And it, it hurts the teams that try to get these long, intricate setups with the multiple wards and make sure you get the double TP on the right ward and make sure you can go at the same time because you don't have enough control over the game to set up that play. And yeah. it's time and time again so far at MSI here that RNG has been able to take the control away from the other teams and bring them to RNG's level and they win it. Yeah, and I, I was almost going to say, like, it seems like RNG might be playing to their opponent's levels. It's that they're dragging everyone to that level that they play at and they can right? beat them because they know. They're making it an LPL game. I mean, even against Supermassive, it was kind of back and forth. People were like, oh, I don't know if they could play a clean game against yeah. someone like SKT. And then, well, they could and they continue to play these games and they're 6-0. and Yeah, I mean, it took an hour, but they were able to do it. It's just been super crazy how they've been able to pull these results off consistently. Very, very well played by them all across the board. And, you know, there's hope, even still, for, for G2, for all these other teams. But it's going to be real hard to get yeah. through RNG. Yeah, can't wait for the last two days of group stage. Yeah, so there we go. All right, then. Well, I guess that's all about it. We are uh, still going through this as everyone is is actually... I gotta, you got to imagine, like, the noise that we've heard in this crowd has been like the loudest I have heard at any event, at any stadium. Yeah. And they've got so much reason to be to be happy for it. It's, it's insane. Yeah, the Chinese support has been absolutely awesome for these guys. And they weren't the most popular team in China coming into this one, but they're trying to make a case that they could deserve to be the most important, yeah, well, the most popular team in China. Home field advantage certainly has its, has its advantages, but with that, we're going to go ahead and send it back to the analyst desk to break it down and close out the day. Thank you very much, gentlemen. RNG with six straight wins. They're going to be happy about that, clinching their uh, bracket stages and first seed for Worlds. But Deficio, the big question <laughs> is, did we see positive trends? We did see some positive things from D2, okay. 100%. The problem is every time we saw something good, we saw something bad. And we kept going good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. I knew every single time they got a kill, I turn to you guys, I'm like, all right. <laughs> very, very soon, they will lose someone somewhere and randomly someone get picked off and yeah. I can't confirm, this, this, that is not a lie. Deficio was sitting here and every time something good happened, he's like, something bad is about to happen, something bad is about good, to happen. Bad, good, wait bad, for it, man. wait for it, wait for it. But Spawn, honest assessment about this G2 roster as they're warming into the tournament, if at all. So it looks like they can start to set up for some objectives. And uh, what Deficio said is pretty much spot on because what they do is they put in all the hard work and it's so frustrating to watch them do it because, you know, they're taking the methodical step by step. They get what they're looking for. And then Emperor gets picked bottom lane by MLXG and Burns Flash, or he steps into a stun from Echo just as they're doing all this hard work. And the problem is, is when you do that against teams like Flash Wolves, against teams like uh, RNG, you elongate the game. So all of a sudden, what was a thousand gold advantage goes to a 600 gold mm -hmm. advantage, and it puts an extra couple of minutes on the game. And then they get you in this one late game team fight around Baron, and they just beat the absolute heck out of you because they're a better team fighting team than you are. Yes, here's an example of where we saw them be out team fought. That's where I want to turn to you, Clement, with RNG. You know, Jack kind of, Jat and uh, Pyro were talking about a little bit this idea that they can play to the, or they force you to play to their level. They force you to play the Chinese game. And again, we do see that everywhere from SKT 
to Flash Wolves to Supermassive yeah. and G2. Exactly. I think they just engage so well. There's not many teams in the world where you can see them pulling off three or four flanks at the same time. The last Baron fight, you could see them coming in for four different directions. Like, Emperor had nowhere to go, and Kiki's just couldn't peel for the right carries at the right time. And the way they held off the sieges, I think, was absolutely brilliant. They would have the Echo behind, put a little bit of pressure, and then everyone take out the Azir turret and then fall back and then try to do it over and over again. I think G2 showed a lot of progress. They had a lot of good pushes, but they could never take it to fruition. You speak of that final fight. Deficio, I want to throw it to you. We have a replay Why do I have of it. to talk about <laughs> it? Ah, we have to watch it again. Fine. Right. Well, it's, it's, something, it's something bad, right? Yeah, you know, this was after some good things. We obviously got the bad one. The start is actually okay. MLSG gets knocked into the wall, but he's still a graze late game. And here's the problem. They go all in for Xiaohu on this little bank, but he managed to escape, and now you're split up. And this pick composition with LeBlanc from obviously RNG and this style where we get these messy, messy fights and each player can kind of win the fight on its own. It's exactly what they want. So as soon as that little engage on Xiaohu misses, the fight is basically lost for G2, and, but it's really, really close. And AD carries around the world are sitting there looking at RNG saying, I want Wuxia's job. Because people are trying to kill Xiaohu. People are trying to kill MLXG. Like, Looper is so damn annoying, and Mata is just always stalwart in his defense of his AD carry. And Wu just lights people up that whole time. Like, no one is hitting him. Speaking about MLXG, early game, I actually feel like he does a lot of work for RNG, especially in this game. Because we have that lane swap, which technically is a good thing for G2, because it means at least they will be even with RNG. But what ends up happening is that G2 is so used to playing the European lane swap, where no one takes any chances, it's all about pushing that tower, you never want to miss just two seconds on tower, so you never roam. Randomly, MLXG level 2 ganks mid lane. It's not random, they no, saw no, no. him yeah, at yeah, right. Yeah, like, yeah. He is definitely sure, on that side of the again, map. According to European lane swap, randomly he shows up, okay? <laughs> Later on when they make another rotation and Emperor is in the bottom lane, MLXG sits in the tri-bush, gets another kill. And these kind of plays is what I want to see from teams back in the EULCS when you try to break the habit, really. It doesn't have to be so stale and the same every time. And that's why G2 gets so surprised. I hate to break it to you, Deficio. We're not in Europe anymore. <laughs> no, it's we'll time to point. start <laughs> working outside of the European lane swap. Clement, final point here is... It was actually a positive thing, by the way, for RNG. <laughs> it is a very positive right. thing for RNG. Uh, I want to uh, look at... The, the jungle meta and the way it's developing because we've seen Nidalee coming into the tournament tons of priority placed on Nidalee still a lot of priority placed on Nidalee as a champion in terms of pick ban however not finding nearly as much success as we would have imagined so do we expect this pick to kind of fall to the wayside as that kind of pokey farm heavy jungler. Yeah, I, I do think so because coming into the tournament a lot of people were saying Nidalee was a must ban for purple side, must first pick just because Kindred and Graves obviously got a lot of nerfs hit on them 6.7, 6.8. But now we're seeing that Kindred is like 8 and 2 in the tournament and Nidalee has not been doing so well here. I really think like the Graves, like the early burst damage, uh, like people like Karsa and MLXG play it so well. That level 2 gank from the MLXG there was <laughs> absolutely amazing, actually. I thought Flash there was cleanse, but still securing the One kill. One thing I do want to caveat is we still have a couple of very good Nidalee players, and if it does fall to the wayside and people don't prioritize it, MLXG will pick it up, as he did versus CLG, mm -hmm. and eventually make you play for it. Nidalee played at the highest level, at least in my opinion, is still one of the best champions in the game. Okay. Well, again, as long as the meta fits Nidalee, again, that's the whole problem about this tournament. Everything we've seen in almost every region except for the LPL, has changed because Nidalee coming into this tournament was used as this high pressure jungler. You don't really gank lanes, but you keep invading into enemy jungle. You have pushing lanes, you set up tower dives. Again, you force people off towers and you can technically even play a game where you never have to team fight. You just take every single objective on the map. You snowball out of control with a high, high tempo. But here at MSI, we don't get these kind of games anymore. We've seen like once, and that's why Nidalee never finds really a place because it's team fighting, team fighting, team fighting, then Graves and Kindred are just much better. But QG still play Nidalee. They're one of the best team fighting teams the LPL has. I mean, when you look at RNG, they play Nidalee. Snake play Nidalee. This is not sure. a new pick. No, 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 no. Teams. It is by you no means You just have to go Rylai's, Zonyas. Stop building Rod of Ages on Nidalee. Even you then, cannot team fight with it. Even then, if you look at the LPL, during the season with the team fighting teams. The Nidalee is never the reason you win a late game team fight. She might get you there where you can start team fighting, but she will never win it for you. And that's been the problem here. All right, I almost regret asking the question. I didn't realize it was gonna set you guys <laughs> yeah. off so much. No, it's a fun topic. No, it is, yeah. It's important information to be known. 
Uh, well, RNG picking up the sixth win of the day with more than half of the group stage behind us, though. Let's check out how the teams stack up. Royal never give up. Undefeated at 6-0. CLG and the Flash Wolves are locked up in second at 4-2. SK Telecom T1, 2-4. That's a surprise. And G2 Esports and Supermassive tied at one and five. I mean, gentlemen, again, we've, well, we've, we, we've hit on this all tournament long, but if you had told me that this is what the standings were going to look like at the end of day three of MSI 2016, I would have called you crazy. And RNG are supposed to be inconsistent. Like, even when they're great, they are inconsistent, but great. And to see them consistently win six games of League of Legends back to back, even if you are the most diehard Royal Never Give Up fan, that is a big surprise. And I think... Uh, the biggest thing, the scariest thing for me was the point you made earlier, Deficio, about for these bottom two teams that are looking to still possibly make mm -hmm. a run into the bracket stage, the team that they're chasing is SKT <laughs> of all yeah. teams. What is up with that, Clement? I think they're definitely going to rebound. Like, SKT, they're coming in, they're kind of tired and sick, and I think a lot of the teams have identified Blank as a weak point. The Chinese teams, the LMS teams have been calling out Blank for being a weak point, and they are going to attack him in the jungle consistently over and over again. Well, that being said, Bangi is here. Is there a possibility? Do we think that that's a place that SKT and the coaching staff should stretch towards in, in, in order to turn things around? I don't think it hurts to bring him in, at least for one game, you know? Let him play one game. If he has a poor individual performance, maybe you have to go back to blank. But sometimes just making a change can can help a team a lot because you need something new. Right now, blank's confidence is probably at a zero, which could also then be a negative effect. I guess if you do swap him out, you're kind of telling him, hey, man, it's on you, a lot of it. So <laughs> now we're telling you and the community and whatever. But that can be one of the problems. The thing is, right, I don't know whether Blank is, like, he's a part of the problem, but he's not part the, the problem. overall problem, right? But you you just explain it. You're not looking to blame him. You're just looking for the answer to the problem. And unfortunately, that means you need some more experience to help out with his shot calling. Sure. Because like, I do agree that they have tried some different things. I mean, they were pretty much exclusively playing control majors. Faker plays two assassins today and is like, if we're going to lose the game, I'm at least going to like smash people. And they still lose two games. So, you know, this team is searching right now. I don't think Faker is playing that well. He I isn't. mean, yeah, no. we, we can blame uh, Blank all I we think want. Uh, LeBlanc game was hard. fine. I think he had good picks on LeBlanc. I think he had very poor team fights. Yeah, I completely agree. Well, we've had six fantastic games today. We've got six more tomorrow. The action in Shanghai returns tomorrow, starting with a rematch between G2 Esports and Supermassive. Then China's Royal Never Give Up gets back on the rift against the LMS's Flash Wolves. And we'll see SKT versus CLG round two. Of these matches tomorrow, gentlemen, ones we're looking forward to the most. Game two. Game two? I think it's easy to call right now, Clement. You have to agree <laughs> with this as well. RNG yeah. versus the LMS's Flash Wolves one more time. This time, at least, uh, Maple at least gets a counter pick. So let's see what happens. You know, funnily enough, RNG has to play both LMS and NA tomorrow, the, the two next seeds. So it's kind of a, an interesting preview of what might make some very interesting semifinals or finals for this yeah. tournament. And also for RNG, locking in number one, basically, if they manage to win these games. So right. no one can catch them. They guarantee the top seed as well going into the semifinal. G2 and Supermassive, basically, it's 2 0 or go home. I'm yep. going to say, because I don't think SKT is not going to win a game anymore. And if they win one more game, you know, and G2 doesn't get a 2-0 here or super massive, well, you can't really catch them. A lot on the line for all of these teams as they look for either uh, positioning or just making it into the bracket stages. Our coverage of day four begins tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. local time. That's 7.30 a.m. Central European summertime and 10.30 p.m. the evening prior for those in the Pacific Daylight Time. Now for myself, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew here in Shanghai, thank you for watching MSI 2016, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. It's RNG undefeated at 4-0. Flash Wolves 3-1. Whoever wins this game will hold on to first position. Looper survives for a few seconds longer. Flash from NL. Flash Wolves are looking for another one. Looper is still alive. Here comes Looper for the first time this game. Finds no stun. But the verdict is, Flash Wolves, you will be defeated. Dude, the thing I actually loved about that movie is like the little uh, speech or whatever. When they say that the wolf is as strong as the pack and the pack is as strong as the wolf. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Okay, okay
Six is on the front line. Flashes. He's down. There's no more damage from CLG. But who is the one that has to do it? He's being jumped on by Duke. They've managed to kill Bang. Both ADCs are dead. And CLG the numbers advantage. They're looking for Faker. They've got him. And Counter Logic Gaming score a magnificent win for America. It's kickers against the kill secure. Storm Age is caught amongst a plethora of G2 members. And the Emperor's Divide sends Supermassive into G2's waiting hand. G2 Esports had to dig real deep to take down Turkey's Supermassive. Oh, Sword Sword Tiger, 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 here. Oh my he's lord! He gets it! He stole the Baron away! And SKT starts coming apart at the seams! Nice, Lokata! And he's taken out! Now. That's the chance! But Maple sinks the divide and MMD sends him flying back. Baker's pushed back, the double kill for Edo. Flash will have done it again! Who's trying to finish piercing light, double tap. Oh, they're stacked oh. already! Sticks they take in that chew down! Push him, right, push him bottom. Right. Easy, go back mid. Huge! Huge. Pull backwards, and that is everything for CLG! Massive kills, massive win, and a super massive victory for the North American side! Mata with the kill, it's a one for Drake, but Hybrid is left for dead, and Wu slays him. Two now down, G2, they've got to run for their lives! Royal never give up, take the Nexus turrets, take the game, and look so damn strong here in MSI Shanghai!